I'm Brandon Miller, and you are listening to Coach to Coach. This weekly series dives deep into the world of Clifton strengths and how they impact your daily life. Hear from certified strengths coaches on the ins and outs, quirks, and characteristics of all 34 strengths and four domains and how they play out in real life. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Strengths Whisperer Coach to Coach episode with Jessica Cowan, Olive Branch, Mississippi of Cowan Consulting. She's been in and around Strengths since 2012, uh, working directly with clients in her region and beyond if the call comes. Jessica, welcome to the show. Hello, hello, Brandon. Thanks for having me. How you doing? I'm wonderful. Thank you. So Jessica, you could have chosen many methods to focus on for coaching. There's all kinds of options out there. Tell us, why did you choose a focus on strengths? I'd say strengths kind of really chose me versus me choosing strengths. Um, I I do like uh, development, like people development, uh, student development, like leadership development, any type of development. It just so happens we're talking about developer, but before I knew about strengths, I, I loved learning about people development. And so when I came across uh, this assessment report, uh, learned a little bit how it was created, the mechanisms behind it, learned about the one in 33 million. It just really aligned with uh, strengths really just chose me, basically. I uh, I think a lot of us can relate to that. It found us. We weren't looking for it. And then it arrived right in front of us. And so Tell us about your own journey. When did you discover your strengths? What was that like for you? Yeah, funny story. Um, So my background is actually I went to school and my bachelor's is in computer science. So nothing dealing with people um, for the most part. It was all technology. I love technology. I love kind of like fixing things and things of that nature. And so after college or during college, I started, you know, just my goal wasn't to make a lot of money or I had that epiphany while I was in school. I was like, I'd rather be happy. Like, what makes me happy? You know, I did an assessment internally thinking like, OK, what do I enjoy doing? I enjoyed helping people figure out what they like to do in life. Found out there was this whole uh, career field called student affairs where we study student development theories and things like that. Or we help students navigate college. Long story short, my uh, my boss at the time when I went to grad school for student affairs decided um, I, d- I found out about the strengths based leadership book. So he had this book and we were big on assessments, talking about transformational leadership. I knew about the Myers-Briggs assessment. So came across the assessment, uh, took the assessment. And at this point in time, I had already came to the epiphany that I didn't want to do st- Uh, computer science work after my bachelor's degree. So what I didn't mention is that I took a gap year, assessed my life, decided that I'd rather deal with people than technology or computers. I'd rather help people develop and build people up than build computer programs. This is before I had the language of strengths. And so I decided to go get my master's in student affairs and higher education administration so that I could help develop uh, people, students, help them figure out what they want to do in life. Come across the strengths assessment, take the assessment, uh, find out that four out of my top five strengths are relationship building. So directly aligned with building people or working with people. So the language where I was like, I don't want to do tech, I'd rather work with people, translated into I'd rather build, you know, I'm a relationship builder. I I lead with building relationships. And number one strength is developer, which we'll talk about. Like I see potential. I like to develop people. All this was uh, concluded when I did that internal assessment. And so um, the strengths journey then took uh, me working in academic advising, helping uh, student athletes kind of discover their strengths. Uh, And then I got certified in 2016 while working at the University of Memphis, working with a program that does strength-based development work with first-generation students. Uh, And then 2018, kind of started my business with helping build strength-based organizations and teams. And so I've been in the strengths. I've been an advocate uh, for strengths since 2012. And now it is kind of my full-fledged, what I like to do wholeheartedly is build strength-based teams and organizations. Who are you working with, Jessica? Where, where, where can people find you? 
So people can find me like, so my business is Cowan Consulting. We do small to mid-sized business development. Um, and then we also work on all levels of building high-performing teams and uh, high-performing individuals. So depending on the need of the business, I like to see if we can meet that need. But ideally, like we're working in the strengths world, we're working with building high-performing teams, whether that's public, private, um, large team, small team. We, we like to build uh, scalable and impactful solutions to help businesses meet their needs and specifically specializing in the space of if you have a people problem, you can contact us and we like to build high-performing teams and individuals. So really all different types of sectors, mainly if you're really willing to invest in your team and invest in your people, we can help find a solution for that. So on that note, tell us about a time you worked with a team and you know you came in and they were one way and doing doing something that they they realized they needed some kind of support they needed some kind of help or some kind of uh upgrade and then you and Cowan Consulting came in and you had some sort of intervention tell us one of those stories and what happened and why did it work and and how did it work a lot of times you're not necessarily working with a team, you're working with that leader first, you know. So the leader has to first recognize that there is a problem uh, and that I do need help. And so once that was, uh, once we had that conversation, the, the problem really was more of like they thought it was, I need a whole new team. But when you think about the strengths mindset, sometimes when you're working with certain types of leaders, it is like a X out this group, I need, a, I need to replace like this. I need a new team. But when we, the beauty of the strengths lens is that we focus on what's working. And we went to, uh, we started incorporating, they had already done a strengths assessment. And so uh, they were familiar with strengths. But what I like doing with businesses is going beyond like a one-off workshop or where we introduce strengths. It's like, how do we actually incorporate this into the practice. Was this a small team, big team? What, what was the size of the group? The entire organization is about 150 people. And then with uh, in the organization, you got, you know, leaders, uh, managers and things of that nature. And so, they're, they're, you know, depending on perspective, they had a, a, a nice number of individuals. And so we assessed and came through and I really met one on one with the coach. I mean, with the leader. And talked about like what are the strengths and really trying to incorporate like the strengths concepts of the language of strengths. So um, I was able to do a leadership workshop, really help the leaders first, you know, start with the managers, start with the leaders, those who can influence the team, really helping them understand their strengths, how they can work better together. And so I did two kind of workshops with them to kind of help the leaders shift that mindset and then went from there. The goal is to create a full blown strength based organization. From there, the manager, we talked about like uh, having a window of trial period to see, you know, okay, how can we see if we could, if these concepts will work, if they were actually, you know, willing to grow, willing to change, you know, grow. Because you have to have a growth mindset when it comes to shifting organizations and even working with people. Um, they have to be willing to change, you know, willing to to develop. And so we use that as a way to see, you know, who's who's willing to go to that next level. Because you mentioned how do you take an organization from one level to the next? There has to be that willingness to get there, you know. And so we did that. And then from there, we were able to create a strategy team to really brainstorm, okay, who's next? Like, how do we, how shall we, how should we embed strengths further? But before you start there, you have to make sure that that team is a team. And so uh, over the course of like four months, I was able to work with a team where we we took, you know, uh, a team of individuals who were high performing within the organization. We put those individuals together to now try to start solving the problems. And with the strengths lens, you help that team to start focusing on like what are what are people doing right? You know, how can we we started using the language? They use it in their check ins. You know, uh, the organization, uh, the leader printed out all the strengths everyone's strengths and she has them put it on their office doors, you know? So when, before you even like, as you're interacting with people, you can see their strengths in their office. You can, and she really, it starts with the top down. So if the leader isn't on board, it's going to be hard to kind of do that. And so this team learning more about how they uh, incorporate strengths, how to use strengths as a language, how to, you know, use it in their check-ins, use it in the reflections and things of that nature uh, one lady, you know, we went through this process of how do we become a team, a strength-based team, 
so that we can now roll that out amongst the organization. They they found out, you know, those without a growth mindset kind of had to be removed, which sometimes a, a team leader has to do that. Um, but when you aren't, those who are bought in, they started incorporating strengths and they went literally from saying, you know, oh, we are, this is a very like detrimental working environment based on the people that I'm working with to now seeing the benefits of how they can work together as a team, the strengths, recognizing each other's strengths, appreciating the strengths, seeing what they need, what they bring and using, you know, the language of strengths to solve problems. And so over the, the course of four months, uh, one lady said, you know, we went from being a tumultuous, tumultuous team, like this is just not working, to now I can appreciate and see what this person needs and what they bring to the table might be completely different from me, but I, I can appreciate that now. And I have the language to, to do that. It helps them. It brings a common language. We can all now speak the same language. So when you, when you look back on that team today and something we talk about in our work is, is sustaining strengths, keeping it in embedded, keeping it to where it's not just an event, but it becomes part of the everyday culture. Are you starting to see that impact with your clients? Are you seeing when you check back, they're still, you know, reflecting strengths on the doors. They're still using it in meetings. It's become now part of everyday life. Yeah, there's some steps in there that we had to do uh, and incorporate in order for them to e even get to that level. Um, I think, it, you know, uh, oftentimes organizations can say they want to do this, but it can be put on the back burner. So there were things that we had to put in place so that we built a system to help to remind them to keep strengths top of mind. And so that's where we see the transformation. We're going to jump over to your number one strength, it sounds like. So you are developer at number one, according to Clifton Strengths. And, you know, when we get our report, we're often reading and looking and trying to understand. And some people, you know, they'll see number one and then they'll jump down to number 34. When you saw yours, developer came up, what, what were some of your initial thoughts when that strength came up number one for you? When it came up as number one for me, my initial thoughts were, you know, I was like, ah, that makes sense. Like, I do always see the potential in people and things. I do, you know, always celebrate the small wins or I love watching people grow. It just really made sense. Like it really aligned with who I with who I was and what I felt like my purpose was in life, which was to help, you know, people find meaning, to help them see who they are, you know, to help them develop and grow without having the vocabulary to to I would mean the full vocabulary to really explain like how I do it. So it really aligned. It 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 was me all the way. So I'm curious as I ask you that question, because with each of these strengths, there there's a way to interpret the the broad scope of the talent inside of one of these themes. So the 34 Clifton strengths are a collection of talent themes. So 34 general categories that Dr. Donald Clifton and the team uncovered to tell us, you know, to tell the world, here is the intact language or vocabulary of how any human on earth could describe their internal talent motivators drive. And talent is, you know, the the repeating pattern of how we think, how we feel, how we behave. And, and I love that they say, you know, when we understand that can be productively applied. So it's not implied that just because you have one of these strengths that you will use it productively, it's that it could be. And something about your story, if I jump back to the beginning, is that strengths for you help to shift your academic and then career focus, it sounds like, that it actually turns your course from a focus on the computer science side of the world to, I want to work with people. And, and some might say that that's pretty dramatic. That's a pretty big shift. So please tell us, you know, when you uncovered developer and it reinforced some things you were already thinking about yourself. Tell us a little bit about that journey of, of discovery, if you would. Again, this was um, shortly after college. So, you know, the number one question that seniors get is, what are you going to do next? You know, the thing that I have learned, because I also teach at a college now, is like I work with students a lot, is 
they oftentimes they don't know. And even as a adult now, I'm like, even sometimes I don't know what's next. You know, that's a hard question for anyone to ask. And so uh, I took a gap year to really assess, like, what is next? Like, what do I want to do? And so I had already did the internal assessment. And so the journey when I discovered strengths, I guess like a year into my grad program, I had already crossed over to deciding that I wanted to work with people. And so when the developer piece came in, it aligned. It just made sense. I was like, ah, like it confirmed that I had made the right decision to shift. Um, And then it wasn't until years later that I decided to really focus a whole business on building strength-based teams. Like it was after being in the field of higher ed and nonprofit and seeing like how I was able to continually work like like my strengths, like really living in my strengths. Like that is my superpower. That is the thing that I do best is really see the connections, help individuals grow, help teams grow, build things. And the computer science background comes into play because I can build things and I can build people. And I, I like to do both. And so the journey, the career journey has just really, uh, as I kept leaning into my strengths a little more, it just made sense that this is what this is what I like to do, build high performing teams and individuals and help businesses be efficient and effective, like develop, build, grow. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to call out some descriptors of developer now. So here's our here's our like we're going to we're going to put your developer to the test. Are you ready? OK. And I'm going to describe some of the contributions a developer makes and I'm going to describe some of the needs a developer has. And we're going we're gonna to see, do you resonate with these? Sound good? Sounds good. All right. So if you're listening today, dear listeners, um, <clears throat> what I'm about to read from is a, an inventory of the 34 strengths called Contributions and Needs. And it's actually something that you can request from us. The, the actual uh, document is called How to Be a Good Teammate to Me. It includes the contributions and needs, and it includes um, a really cool exercise that you could do with your team called the best of me. And it builds on this inventory and really supports any leader just to understand their team members and for teammates to know how to engage and connect with each other. So for you, let's talk about developers. So helps others be successful. We're getting a check on that one. True. All right. How about? encourager 100 percent true no i mean oh wait, wait wait let me clarify cheerleader on the basketball team i didn't play but i cheered on the bench you know okay cheered on the bench i got you how about seize potential in others yes okay celebrates even the baby steps 100 percent. yes small bits of progress yes keep going challenges others to grow <laughs> yes 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 people you realize not everyone wants to grow that's that's a less lesson learned Okay. So challenges others. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so it's a little different, right? So there's encouraging others and then there's challenging because sometimes you're seeing the potential they cannot see in themselves. You're calling them up, right? You're calling them up. Right. right. Some would say, some might feel like you're being called out, but I've always found with developers, you're called them up, mm, right? I like to, yeah. But come on, come up, come up with me. I could, I could see your next level. I'm not, you know, I'm not embarrassing you. I'm not, I'm not saying you're not enough. In fact, I'm telling you, you have more than enough. You can get there, right? And you have to communicate that if you ever get some resistance, like you have to say like what you see, you know, that helps. So how about uh, empowers others to be successful? Yeah, I'm always cheering. I'm always, I want other people to win. And then, and then the next one is cheerleader. And I think we well documented that one already (laughs) that, that you're doing that. All right. Now that, now let's jump over to you. Okay. So these would be needs you have do you need patience from others yeah especially when you're working with people who yeah yeah they have to be patient yeah when people don't see what you see i guess you do need patience yeah you know uh, some years back i saw the late great kobe bryant um talk about what it takes to be successful and he said you have to embrace the process and and his comment was about it it takes the time it takes to advance in anything worthwhile. And I know he was speaking specifically in the realm of athletics. He was actually talking to a football team at a very well-known university. He was telling them embrace process because 
nothing that's worth investing in happens fast. It, it takes time. And I just find that that's such a developer quality of that coach mindset, right? Like it's, it takes the time it takes. So we do the work it takes and we do it long enough and strong enough. And then progress comes. Would you agree? I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How about you need encouragement? I do need encouragement. Yes. How about celebrating the small steps? Yeah. We got it. Yeah. Okay. Got to take time to do that. Here's a big one. Non-judgment. Yeah. You do need, because I mean, everyone's at a different level. And so uh, when you see that potential, like uh, depending on who you work with, they might judge someone and be like, they're, they're not worth the investment. That's also a hindrance for us. Sometimes we spend too much time on things. You know, I find that that particular need spans several of the domain of strengths relative to relationship building, that there is a need for non-judgment toward self, but I also need non-judgment toward others. And developer sees potential that others can't see, even the individual, but even their closest friends and family members at times don't see the potential. So developers calling up, right? Let's go. And even others need to be encouraged that Judgment will only deter progress in some people. It, it, if it comes harsh and it's exacting and overly um, defining, I'm defining you as I see you instead of who you can become. And that's, that's, that's a challenge. I, I told this story recently to a group of parents. I said, uh, um, one of my kids, I'll, I'll, leave, I'll, I'll leave the person nameless for this example, but one of my kids made an error. One day they found themselves in need of some money and uh, decided that the best place to look for money was mom's purse. And so they went shopping in mom's purse and then they found money and then they took money. Okay. And upon mom finding out that money that she thought was in her purse wasn't there, the inquiry began. <laughs> and, and, and so the inquiry made its way through through the steps. And, and then this one individual was centered as, we think you might be the culprit. And so the questioning began, um, do you know anything about this? And, and if you know kids of a certain age, and we'll say that this one was in the adolescent stage, uh, nope, not me. Nope. Don't know anything about it. What money? What is money? I don't even know what money is. Who is money, right? So that whole, whole journey of, uh, of the uncovering of truth, right? It took some time. And, and in our home, we, we have a philosophy of parenting. And that philosophy is that we give our children every single opportunity to come clean with no consequences. I would rather lead you to truth than consequences for non-truth. Because coming to truth in life, in our opinion, is more important than, than sticking it to you because you did wrong. I, I would like you to learn from it and come to truth. So with this, in this case, with this particular child, we said... We know you're a person who tells the truth, and we know that you're a person of your word and a person who in integrity matters. So we know that if, if there's something here that, that you could acknowledge, um, we would all agree that, that that's an aberration from your character. That's just that's something you did that doesn't define you. And then uh, what we've learned, Jessica, is we just start to count down. We just just wait. Just let, just let the words do their work, and sure enough... I did it, dad. I did it. I did it. And in that moment is, is, a, is a golden opportunity to seal judgment on this child. You're a thief. You're a liar. You, you don't do things that you should. You're, you're this, you're that, you're that, right? And what that does is that that internalizes a rhetoric that you don't want repeated in a child's mind. Would you agree? Yeah. I mean, let's just put it in, in the terms of the workplace, right? If a manager finds that a worker doesn't perform and they, they start to give labels, you always, you never, you, you won't be, right? And so in our case, what we learn is that if we reinforce the behavior we want to see and move away from the non-judgment, this is a developer. Developers are amazing at seeing what's there, even though it might not be present yet. And they're so good at calling it out and building on it so that the person who's 
receiving the developer, you know, the benefit of that developer can start to find affinity with, wow, Jessica sees me in ways I can't even see myself. And in this case, if I, yeah, if I were to ask this child, so how do you see yourself? The, the child now has learned by rote, by, by repetition, I'm, I'm a man of integrity. So non-judgment, I think we both can agree that developers, that's a need, right? Yeah, yeah, because everyone's learning and growing. And so we don't we don't want people to think that we're judging them for where they're at or where we see them. Yeah. How about the need for excitement about their progress? Uh yeah, I think it, it is motivating. How about how about cheering on from others? I do so when others come around you and say, Jessica, you're doing great, keep it up. Yeah, celebrating success with you. That it matters. It helps. Well, it helps. Yeah. All right. How about progress for yourself and others that you need to see progress? Oh, a hundred percent. I I know the answer to that one. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. if we're just, if we're staying the same, what are we doing here? Like, that's right. So uh, listener, if you're hearing this list it comes from the contributions and needs or how to be a great teammate to me, Jessica and I talking through developer today, uh, tell you what, this particular strength is awesome. One of my favorites. I love that, you know, teachers and coaches parents, you know, you find people in management roles. This particular strength is such a, a, a positive people reinforcing strength. And, and even though at times it'll hold on to potential just a little too long, meaning that, that someone isn't seeing the potential and they've given up and, and the coach is still like, no, you can do it. Stay with it. We got this. And Sometimes knowing when to say when is important, but you know, I, I, I'd take that over the ladder, wouldn't you? I'd rather have someone fight, fighting hard, staying with me. So Jessica, I just want to thank you so much for joining us today. All the way from Olive Branch, Mississippi, Cowan Consulting. Jessica, anything you want our listeners to hear about what you're up to or where they might be able to find you after today's episode? Thank you. First off, Brandon, for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, love to talk about strengths. Love my Number one, developer strengths. I wonder where developer falls for you. Is it in your top? Is it in your uh, dominant strengths? It is not. It is not. Okay. But, uh, you got a maximizer maybe in there? Num number one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, you know, the one, the the person that I said I wanted, that wanted to exit out, maximizers is in their top five. So, you know, developers and maximizer, we, we work we we got to collaborate, you know? <laughs> That's right. That's um, right. But no, last I, I'd love for people, I mean, if you want to connect with me, I'm on LinkedIn uh, under Jessica Cowan. I have a website and LinkedIn under Cowan Consulting. Excited to just see where season two goes. I wish you the best, Brandon. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you. And that's that's Cowan, C-O-W-A-N, mm -hmm. Jessica Cowan. So LinkedIn, everyone. You can find Cowan Consulting. Take a look, see what she's up to. She's doing great things, helping teams to sustain strengths, helping teams learn how to perform with their strengths. Uh, thank you, Jessica. So happy to have you listeners. Stay tuned for a message from our sponsor and we'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Strengths Whisperer Coach to Coach. Please feel free to reach out to Brandon to partner with 34 Strong for collaboration opportunities to serve your employees or clients together. If you are a strengths coach, lead a strengths-based team, or are a fan of strength, we invite you to receive our complimentary resource, How to Be a Good Teammate to Me, Understanding My Contributions and Needs. Email Brandon underscore Miller at 34strong.com to connect, and he will gladly share this resource that will continue to unlock the power of strength.